when, as seems inevitable, somebody creates a computer algorithm capable of writing a convincing online review of a car, we suspect its first use will be to craft a story about a performance Audi. Because any digital analysis of past reviews will confirm that they do tend to follow a very predictable script. We haven't reached such a level of automation quite yet, for which we are truly thankful, but the new Audi TT RS Roadster seems to check pretty much every box on the list. Like almost all of its S and RS badged predecessors, the new car is incredibly quick and reassuringly adept at finding more than enough traction to match its potency in without much in the way of driver flattering involvement that typically draws enthusiasts to sports cars. The new Roadster shares all of its principal mechanical componentry with its coupe sibling that we reported on earlier. That means a new, lighter 5-cylinder turbocharged engine with an aluminum block in place of the cast iron crankcase power plant of the last car, and which lives on for now in both the RS Q3 and the RS3 hatchback, neither of those is sold in the States, although we are promised the upcoming RS3 sedan. The new unit is claimed to be 57 pounds lighter than the old engine, with the significance of that weight savings amplified by the engine's location ahead of the front axle line. Output has risen to 400 horsepower, and Audi claims a 3.9 second 0 to 62 mile per hour time, just two tenths slower than the coupe. The expensive reworking of the 5 pot is proof of the leverage that Audi still has within the Volkswagen universe, with company insiders admitting that it would have been possible to extract similar performance from the existing EA888 2.0 liter 4 cylinder. Indeed Volkswagen itself was working on just such an engine, although we've recently reported that the program was cancelled. Audi has been building Turbo 5 since the original Quattro launched in 1980, and enough people are still buying them to allow the company to maintain this welcome exception to VWS policy of shared componentry. Long may it continue. The RS Roadster S obvious gain over the coupe is that with its roof down it allows its occupants to better appreciate the soundtrack of its oddball engine. It really does produce a noise reminiscent of the competition quattros that dominated the early years of the infamous Group B rally regulations, and it can rip through the ratios of the standard 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox with similar alacrity. It has a much different beast than is the existing TTS, far louder and angrier and with an enthusiasm for operating at the extreme top of its rev range that the lesser car just no S&T possess. It pulls hard all the way to the 7200 revolution per minute fuel cut off, with the virtual cockpit instrument display changing color and the more aggressive dynamic modes to warn of the rev limiter approaching. The road stress structural reinforcement brings a predictable weight penalty. Audi figures it is 199 pounds heavier than the coupe, but the lack of a fixed roof no s and bring any other significant compromise to the driving experience. With the fabric roof in place, it feels nearly as quiet and refined as the hardtop, and even with its toe there is only the slightest hint of flex in the car's structure when it is asked to tackle a bumpy road at speed. It feels similarly sticky, with the all-wheel drive system, the familiar Haldix developed hardware, now produced by Borg Warner, routing to work to the rear axle and finding huge grip even in damp conditions on the Spanish roads where we drove the car. Not that there is any real encouragement to venture beyond the limits of adhesion. The RSS way distribution and to work dispersal are definitely front biased, and although it understeers less than did the last generation RS, adding throttle at the limit just pushes the nose wider. While it is possible in the Porsche 718 Boxster to adjust your vector by adding power to induce more rear slip angle, the only way to bring the RS back onto its intended track is to ease off the accelerator and make the car tuck in. The Roadster possibly could be faster than the Boxster around a track, but it is a far less engaging car to drive on the edge. The RS Roadster also lacks the coupe's ability to play the practicality trump card. Like all other soft top TTs, it does without the coupe's small, but viable for children, rear seats, and it also has less trunk space, 8 cubic feet is short of what the Boxster can accommodate in its trunk and trunk by 2 cubes. 
The other problem is what s likely to be a familiar one to US buyers in search of niche performance models. At the moment we retold that the numbers just don't add up and there are no plans to bring the RS Roadster here, although Audi also says there is no reason the Roadster couldn't be sold in the US if demand somehow materialized. Like we said, a familiar script, the script.